Hi there, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks Certification Program in Education Services here at Juniper Networks. This Learning Buddy is the next in our Class of Service Basics series, and this one focuses on classification. So here's our master page laying out the major cost components you'll find on a Junospace device. And of course, for this Learning Byte, we will discuss the first component, classification. So when traffic comes into your device, you want to separate it out so you can treat it differently. Give certain traffic prioritization over other traffic. And the way that you can do this is using classifiers on the device. So classifiers let you separate out that traffic so you can treat it differently as you get further into the cost process. Now forwarding classes are linked to physical queues in the device. You might hear the idea of incoming traffic being sorted into queues. Well that's effectively the same thing. Uh, when we talk in terms of configuration we think of forwarding classes but they are linked together. So you can see the diagram in the middle there, data coming into the device, hitting the classifier, and based on a variety of criteria that you'll see coming up, uh, split into the different classes or queues. Now classifiers also have an additional layer of, uh, of traffic separation to them called loss priority or drop precedence if you like. Uh, they're used later on in the process by policers and schedulers. Uh, another layer as I said to, to mark traffic uh, within a given forwarding class and mark it differently for a higher level of drop priority or a lower level uh, as you get further along. It helps you uh, give more granular control to make decisions about dropping traffic under congestion. In terms of configuring forwarding classes, uh, a Junospace device comes with four default classes already set up. They are best effort, expedited forwarding, assured forwarding, and network control. Now these are, are standardized uh, traffic classes. Um, we didn't discuss these in the first overview learning byte for Class of Service Basics, but I strongly encourage that you uh, check out additional resources to learn about these standards, uh, their terminology, the, the costs bit settings that go with each of those classes. Uh, so again, I encourage you to get more familiar with each of those uh, because you're, you're sure to see them in, in uh, networks. But you can configure your own here and you can see some examples on the right side. Now depending on the device that you're working on, uh, you might configure uh, either the first or the second method, but uh, they, they essentially give you the same result. You can see here under the class of service section of the, uh, the configuration hierarchy, there's a forwarding classes section. And in each case, what you're able to do are, are two things. The first is to name your different forwarding classes, and you can create them as you like. And then you're also going to associate your class with a queue. So as you can see there, we have created uh, four new forwarding classes in this example, and each one is associated with the queues 0 through 3. Now one other note here is that uh, the number of supported queues and classes can vary a little bit depending on the platform you're using. Uh, some have a higher capacity than others. So uh, I encourage you to check the technical documentation for your particular product and uh, you'll find out how many queues and classes you have to work with on your device. There are two general mechanisms that are available on a Junos device for classification. And this slide discusses the first one. It's called multi-field classification. You can separate out incoming traffic based on a variety of parameters in the packet headers. So uh, if you think of a, you know, a, a, an incoming packet header, things like IP addressing or port values, uh, any of those kinds of parameters can be used here. Now the implementation of it on a Junos device is to, uh, to configure multi-field classification using a firewall filter. And that's what allows us to get that granular control based on those different packet header fields. It's a two-step process. You configure a firewall filter to, to separate and catch the traffic uh, as you want to for the different classes. And then, of course, you need to apply it somewhere. So you'll apply it to the appropriate interface where you want that traffic to get uh, examined. So you can see examples of the configuration elements at the bottom there. So on the left, you define the filter. We are within the firewall section here. Uh, you can see a filter called MF classifier there. It has uh, a term that matches against a particular source address subnet, 150.1.1 slash 24. And you can see the resulting then statement. It assigns traffic that matches that parameter into the forwarding class called premium data. 
And so we have a mechanism here to classify our incoming traffic from a, a particular element of the network. We need to then apply that to the relevant place where that traffic is expected to come into our device. And so you can see on the right side, we've applied our MF classifier filter as an input filter on that particular interface. The second option for classification is called behavior aggregate classification. Now this type of classification is used when the traffic coming into your device already has cost markings in the header. You can make use of these incoming markings and instead of looking through the various other packet header fields, you know, use these markings and directly assign it to a queue, uh, assign the traffic to a queue and send it on its way for further cost processing. Things here are configured under the class of service section of the hierarchy. So on the left side there, you can see a classifier that's defined. It's uh, of type DSCP. So that tells it's a, an IPv4 diff serve code point classifier. We're going to be looking at the IPv4 header in this case, called V4BA classifier. You could name it whatever you like. And there are uh, a sampling here of what could go into this classifier. Now, probably the easiest way to interpret this is for me to read it backwards. So if I take the, the bottom example there and read it from, from right to left going backwards. So that code point of 101111 will traffic coming in that has those bits in the cost header or the, the toss byte of the, of the packet header uh, will be given a loss priority setting of low and assigned to the forwarding class premium data. And so if you use that approach, you can follow your way up through the, the example there, uh, even to the top one. So no bits at all, all zeros. Well, that belongs in the best effort data forwarding class with a loss priority setting of high. And so that's the, the mechanism that's, that's used here to define your classifier. And you can carry on and define more, uh, more forwarding classes as you like in this classifier. And you can also define more levels of loss priority. Uh, so, you know, very customizable type of thing here. On the right side, you can see applying this classifier. We're still under the class of service section. And for the appropriate interface, we are applying the classifier, again, DSCP, so an IPv4 classifier here. And we've labeled the name of the classifier again to apply it. And so that takes us to the demo portion here. I'm going to show you some of these elements in action. We are going to configure some forwarding classes. And then we will uh, try out a multi-field classifier. Now you can see our little network diagram there. I'm going to work from a traffic generation server and send traffic uh, across a router and into the network. And so the relevant interfaces there uh, on that router, you can see an MF classifier on uh, GE006. And then we will also look at some counters as traffic leaves on GE0012. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to show you is those default forwarding classes that are, are actually on the device by, uh, by default. So let's just pull those up. There you go. You can see those four best effort, expedited forwarding, assured forwarding, and network control all assigned to their default queues. Everything is in place here. So now let's go into our router a little bit into configure mode and check out a couple of things that I've pre-configured on, uh, on the device already. So the first thing is we want to assign some customized forwarding classes. And you can see an example of, uh, of what I've done there. I've built a, a forwarding classes stanza and assigned our four custom forwarding classes and assigned them to related queues here. So I'm just going to activate this on the device. There we go. So that will be good to go. The next thing we're going to do here is look at a multi-field classifier. I have pre-configured one here as well. And you can see under our firewall stanza, I've created a filter called MF classifier, and it has two terms. We're matching uh, on a term called BE data, and it's going to match uh, TCP traffic at port 80. And for traffic that matches that, we are going to send it and assign it to forwarding class BE data. The next term there called premium data, we're going to match on TCP traffic at port 12345, and that traffic is going to be assigned to the forwarding class premium data. So it's already here on the device. I'm simply going to activate it. There we go. So it's in place now. Now remember that firewall filters are fine and good. You can create them as much as you like, but they don't do anything until you apply them somewhere. So I'm going to apply this to our uh, incoming or our ingress interface. It's 
GE006. And we need to call our, uh, our filter there. And there it is. Let's just do a show on GE06 to confirm everything looks good. So we're looking good there. So I'm going to commit this. OK, it's committed and everything's looking good. I'm just going to clear out some interface statistics here to uh, make sure things are easier to see as we do our monitoring of this traffic. Now I'm going to switch over to a traffic generator here. And I'm using a, a tool called HPing. It gives us the ability to, to uh, send ping traffic on particular ports. So I'm sending to a particular IP address further along in the network here, several hops down. Uh, I'm going to send a count of 50 packets. It's going to do it pretty quickly here. And I'm going to use port 80 on TCP. So here it goes. There's our 50 packets all done. Now I'm going to switch back over here, and I'm going to check out our status on the egress interface. So that's an important, that's uh, or that's a detail that's important to note here. When you want to look at at the results of cost processing, uh, including things like assigning traffic to queues and forwarding classes, well, the, a lot of the mechanics of that are actually done around, you know, centered around things like assigning bandwidth and to queues and giving certain traffic classes enough buffer space or things of that nature. And those things actually happen more on the egress side of the device. And so all of that to say that when we monitor these things and we want to see the traffic going by, well, we look on the egress side of the device where the traffic is going out of. Now you can see right here, we've got our customized queues. And you can see uh, in the queue counter section, that is, we've got our customized queues. And you can see about 50 packets uh, went through that, that uh, Q0 or that BE data forwarding classes, just like we had assigned it to in our multi-field filter and classifier. Uh, the 51 packets, there are a couple of other packets floating around here. So it's pretty common to see some extra packets in the mix here. All right, so let's switch back. And let's try and send traffic to uh, port 12345. So same general hping command here, but we'll try that other port. There we go. Let's go right back here and check our, uh, our interface status here using the extensive command, which provides a huge amount of output information, including the relevant uh, items for us here. You can see under queue counters, there are our forwarding classes again with their queues. And now you can see exactly 50 packets got sent through and matched on that forwarding class uh, or that multi-field classifier and we've got the got their traffic assigned to the premium data forwarding class so that takes us to the end of this learning bite uh, you know, cost is a huge topic. Uh, there's certainly more detail than we can get into here. So, uh, you know, I encourage you to look in in a number of additional places for more information. The first is uh, check out the product documentation for your own device. As I mentioned a bit earlier, you know, there can be little variations um, that are a bit product specific. So you'll want to check out those variations to ensure that you have, uh, you know, you understand the correct number of forwarding classes and queues available to your device and that you understand all of the options and, and fine details of the features. Uh, for your particular Juno-based device. The next logical place to get a bit more information about cost in general is our next cost basics learning bite. Uh, on our next one, we will move on to the next stage of the major you know, cost stages that are in play here, and we will look at policing. There's also more formalized education services training. Junos Routing Essentials has some, uh, some coverage of costs, as does the full two-day Junos Class of Service course. Lots of depth and good hands-on training there. As I mentioned already, product documentation, check out the guides for your specific product. And there's also a day one guide around as well called Deploying Basic QoS, good uh, handheld kind of document or an e-document if you like to, uh, to review costs and quas from, uh, from a, an examples and case study type of perspective. Thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology-specific training paths. 
Juniper Network's certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.